Hello, I'm here to walk you through the Sigma Call Center Capacity and Service Dashboard solution. My name is James Zerbes. I'm Lead Consultant for Contact Center Analytics at PH Data, and I'll spend a couple minutes showing you why this solution is important, then I'll walk you through the dashboard itself. This will give you an idea of why Sigma can be the ideal tool for getting insight into service risk and financial risk for contact centers, where responsiveness and action based on your data is critical to outcomes for your customers, members, providers, or whoever is reaching out to you for support. This is critical for every call center operations leader to get right because so much is at stake. Small process variants will quickly add up to big problems that cost much more to correct than to prevent. Off-the-shelf reports often lack the integration with other processes and data sources needed to surface the answers that you need to make decisions right now. And further, since most contact centers are also cost centers, this kind of data is key to advocating for your team's role in supporting NPS results, as your team is effectively the face of the company to your customers. This can help unlock the resources needed to be, build the right team with the right tools and processes and get the outcomes your customers expect. The path here is to systematically identify the process variance that leads to financial and service risk. If you can't quickly understand the root cause of that risk, then you can't expect to be effective in countering it before or when it happens again. The key to this is getting your data in Snowflake and extracting your va its value in Sigma. There are many inputs and factors that contribute to the tug of war between staffing capacity and contact demand, and I could spend more time than we have talking about any one of them, but they all play a role in your success, and your data for each of them can be captured in Snowflake for analysis in Sigma. This unlocks the end-to-end -end insight into the whys of past outcomes and the decision-making to balance future cost and risk. So, Let's get into the dashboard. So here it is, the call center dashboard in Sigma. Um, I will give you a very, very quick tour of what we're looking at, um, but uh, we have several sections of the report at the top. Um, so this is the summary tab, which is a high level view of uh, a lot of metrics that just give a quick glance view of risk and potential actions. I can quickly see here's my service level for the month. I'm at 84%, so I'm looking good against my goal of 80%. And I can see my run rate uh, for the rest of the month is 63%. So as long as I'm above that, then uh, we'll be in good shape to hit the monthly goal. I also have a view of weekly headcount uh, for the year so far and through the rest of the year. So I can quickly see my longer term staffing position. And I also have more detailed uh, daily views of here's my staffing uh, requirements versus plans. And here's my uh, actual staffing uh, versus the requirements. So uh, and then further down, we get into root cause uh, drivers. So here's my waterfall of impacts, which I'll talk about more in a moment, and then a quick view of call volume and average handle time variance. We also have um, some basic controls at the top. So your call center is going to look different from this one. That's OK. Um, I uh, created the call center uh, that we're seeing here based on data that I've seen before, uh, working with this uh, sort of thing. Uh, but we've got filters for segments. So maybe customer service versus tier two or retention. Or I might want to filter for a certain site uh, within my organization. We also have some nice date controls here. So you can pick the range of dates and the, the grouping or the granularity of the dates. And then there's presets down here as well. So you can quickly hit a button instead of having to uh, uh, play around with controls to get what you need. Um, so real quick, I'll just show you some of the views that are in here. This is a uh, typical planning view uh, that defaults to the last six, 13, uh, six weeks and the upcoming 13 weeks. Uh, and shows just the staffing position overall, as well as all of the key components that make up that staffing position. So this is a good place where you might have this up on a call with your team uh, every week and just discuss uh, where there's favorability or risk and if OT is allocated appropriately and if you're uh, teed up for all of the playbook actions that you uh, may, may need in order to uh, hit the treble spots. Um, this can go by day or week uh, and is uh, going to just hook into the data that you have. Uh, this view I'll quickly uh, show, but this is one of the more unique and I'd say powerful views within here that gives us a data-driven look into root cause. So on the outside of this waterfall, we have the forecast, and on the inside, we have the actuals. And where they meet, you have the variance between um, your actual staff and your actual capacity. And then along the outside, you can see all of the data-driven impacts. So I can see my impact from change in call volume versus forecast, or average handle time, or my model efficiency or change from schedule shrinkage, uh, or time away from work, or adherence, or OT, or support hours. And I can also uh, click a button here to add in the, uh, the risk from a financial standpoint. So what changed between the financial forecast and the service forecast? Well, I can quantify that here. So this is a really powerful view for telling what happened and why, um, so that you can uh, take appropriate action based on the root cause. Uh, I'll very quickly 
uh, go through some of the other tabs here. So we've got views for each of these metrics. So I've got a quick view into my variance for call volume uh, over time and across different dimensions. And we can drill into any of those however I'd like. I have a view for the same thing for average handle time and also some details on uh, the training ramp. So when you have new hires, uh, that's gonna have an impact on your forecasted uh, average handle time until they get more tenure and get more experience handling those calls. We also have a quick view here for um, showing uh, schedule shrinkage. So what's our availability impact from schedules? So uh, whether it's from uh, time away from work, uh, planned or unplanned or breaks running along or meetings or anything like that, we can explore that data here and quantify what's happening and why. Um, and is it a certain date or is it a certain site uh, where a variance or an impact is coming from? We have views on occupancy, which is uh, one of the more uh, nebulous but uh, important metrics uh, to consider and watch when you're planning call center uh, capacity. Uh, and then we also have efficiency, uh, which uh, simply put as a way to make sure that your models are doing what they ought to be and that they're aligning with the reality of your actuals uh, and your data. And then uh, we have this nice headcount view here, last but not least, uh, showing up at the top what's our attrition looking like. Uh, over time and across uh, various teams. So you can monitor that. And then we have a nice weekly staffing review for the whole year to show um, wh where are staffing impacts to headcount and what are the sources of those. So is it attrition um, that's driving down the headcount or uh, what, where are new hire classes planned? And uh, internal moves are accounted for as well as internal promotions outside of production roles. So there's a lot of detail here and you can drill into any of this in the same way. So that is a quick tour of the dashboard and I'll just finish showing you that uh, there's a toggle if uh, between dark mode and light mode. So you can pick whichever is friendlier to your eyes on a given day um, and enjoy that. So uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully this was helpful.